Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, goodbye. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> sounds good. King of the castle there. Carry on. You want to come show them your house? Efficient in such a small space that it does a great job of keeping us warm uh, for the most part. I mean, like there's a couple of cold pockets, but uh, yeah, I say it, it does it does its job well. Interesting. What was the reasoning for this panel here? So this panel, because it's so long, uh, boards don't go the full width. So you're going to have some sort of jagged board line either way. And so yes. This is a, mostly an aesthetic thing yes. to just break that up so it looks intentional. Um, no real function besides that. Nice. Yeah. Uh, solar setup. Big old 400 pound box. Three batteries, inverter. Had to mount the solar panels on the roof, which is great in the summer because it angled towards the sun. Now in the winter, it's it should be facing that way. Do you have backup uh, power? Or, well, yeah. So we're plugged up to the grid. So there's, there's two electrical units. The solar power is the lights, the fridge, the outlets. Um, the, the lower draw stuff, and then the higher stuff, that's all plugged up to the grid. Could you do just, could you be off the grid? Yeah, so the panels pull down more than the store. So, you, uh, yeah, you, you, yeah. you could, but if I could do it again also, the, the power wall, the Tesla power wall, yes. it wasn't out at the time, but now it's like a viable solution. So you could totally replace that to whole thing. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's, it's all good, it's okay. vision behind this, or more permanent, um, have a big deck, yes. wraparound oh, deck, nice, covered deck, nice. and you, essentially you could double your space. I mean, if you had a deck that went all the way out, um, that was covered. Who said a Christmas tree and tiny homes can't coincide? It's all one space, which is key because that makes it feel very like open, and so you almost trick your mind into making it feel as if it's a bigger space. So yes. it feels a lot less cramped in here. I know you're not standing with us, but it's a lot less cramped feeling than a lot of the apartments and stuff that are studios and smaller spaces in the city. And other tiny homes that have sectioned off multiple yes. rooms. It's, exactly. Yeah. I like that this bed here. It's cozy. So this is a, um, our big chair for a tiny house. We, um, two or three years ago, when we first kind of came to the idea of Having a tiny house, uh, we were in the mall and sat in one of these in a demo and ah. like kind of made a vow. Like one day when we achieve the dream of living in a tiny house, like we'll put this. That's what we're going to get. So we did. Like we, we made it happen and it's kind of cool to be standing in like your dream materialized. Like after years of like planning and dreaming and stuff. And you've got this reminder here to of, of like what happens when you kind of like have that inspiration and move forward with that. And this is just here to remind you, you can do it. And you know what? That's what I recommend for people is to take those steps of commitment in your head. So like yes. little things like that. Yes. I'm a huge proponent of really kind of birth that into like your reality. So like yes. we did things in the planning process um, like turned our uh, internet password to Tiny House Family or like our Wi-Fi name. And now we have an Instagram account, Tiny House Family. Yes. Um, and our password was like, I forget, oh, um, 100K yay to make $100,000 a year, every year. And it's within a little... one year, just even those little decisions to do it, yes. it's materialized. Yes. And my life is like every time and time again, it's like I have examples of, of that. Yes. You know, we, we got plans and we drew it up and we started like just thinking about the specifics and things that we wanted. And then literally within, within months of doing that, the opportunity to actually build it after two years of waiting, like immerse. So like as much as you can plan and start making it happen, little yes. decisions. Yes. I think the faster it'll come. And it's so, it's just a decision away. And that's what I've been saying this whole time. It's literally one decision away. You want to go out tight? That's one thing. So living in a tiny space, it really makes him want to go out and explore. Ah. Um, constantly, he always wants to go outside. He wants to go to 
do you see that as a good thing or or a challenge? Not always the most convenient thing, but it's <laughs> definitely a good thing. Yes. Bye bye, Silas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> This was designed with intent, thinking ahead of Silas in a high chair situation. So yes. we designed it to where this empty space was here. And they fit just perfectly. Perfect. Yeah. Hide away. Done. Stairs. This is the most treacherous part of for us living in a tiny house um, because Silas is he he can climb. Yes. Um, and he loves it. So at any chance he gets, he's all over these stairs and like a fall from up here, like not good. No. That's like certain death. Yes. Uh, and one time he actually slipped and fell. I was standing probably where you are. Yeah. And uh, I caught him. Oh. So, like, he was, like, <gasps> no. Like, I just saw I was in the right place. And I was like. Ah. <laughs> so. Oh it's, God. It's pretty sketchy. It's, it's a constant stressor. So to answered that we built this after the fact and it works like magically it's just like simple hardware yeah and we spray painted it you know nothing crazy but it really kind of fits in with the look and feel um storage stairs the pretty good i mean there's a lot of space that we're not using which if i could go back again i would probably be more intelligent about the design but generally i mean they are storage stairs and they work they everything about a tiny house every space is intentional yes and has t multiple uses like for it so yes kitchen kitchen pretty much full size this thing was clutch after the fact we love these little like magnet strips for, oh those are handy because you just don't have like tons of drawers for knives and so anything you can do like this and this and just kind of all helps um full size fridge it really accommodates our needs we don't have any issues with space we really have full size gear and the storage we have more than enough like we're not even using this storage space up here really this is so deep we don't even use half the space mm -hmm. um, plenty uh, enough storage for all of our needs little things that you just make use of spaces mm -hmm. awkward um, sometimes on what you fit but you just find use for everything this is where we we stow our brooms and stuff it just fits nice right in that crack mm -hmm. propane gas range uh, an oven which we almost burned the tiny house down with this once. How so? The, uh, the insulation somehow managed to find its way out of the back corner into the oven space and it caught fire because it's like it's propane, oh so it's, you're dealing with flames. Right. And um, I opened it up and it like exploded and <laughs> burst into flames. We were in full panic mode. Um, Jane had to run and get a fire extinguisher. Like I, had, I ran around the building and turned off the propane so they didn't want to explode. But we lived and. Just fine. I so, tuck it back in. That's it. Large bathroom as far as tiny houses go. Um, shower, full size shower. A nice like rain shower head. Yeah, it's it great. Up. Luxury Silas. Um, we don't get bath time because he's, you know, he's a toddler. We miss it on that, but he just gets in there with us and. That's, it works. No, yeah. no issue. That's his life. That's his what he does every day. So nice. he doesn't know any different. Washer dryer combo unit. So it's space efficient. It's not necessarily the most convenient. It takes a long time to do a load of clothes. And they tend to wrinkle more, I think, because they, they drain and then as they drain they, they wrinkle and then they dry wrinkled. Another storage. This is I guess like our biggest single storage space. I mean if you have too much stuff it it starts to feel messy and cluttered, so it kind of forces you to purge. So we have a rule, um, one thing in, one thing out is one of those rules. So ah. like when we buy a new shirt or new shoes or whatever, like I'm always uh, bitching at Jana, like, all right, what shoes are you gonna throw out? You know, so yeah. it's kind of this like ongoing thing. Um, and then our other rule is once a month, and we don't always, we don't hit every month, but we try to um, get rid of 21 things, it's like a game. So once a month we'll say, all right, what are your 21 things? And we have to dig through all the drawers and pick 21 things to throw out or give away. Yes. Um, and that goes a long way. Like, it's about time we do this drawer right now. Oh, Janet cleaned it up. Um, but earlier today, it was probably a rat's nest. <laughs> so, um, composting toilet for guys, I didn't know this. You have to sit to pee because the, the the way the toilet's designed, like you can't oh, stand. Oh right. Uh, it's got a little like pee trap that like drains out to gray water, and we have a little um, hose that uh, runs out to just a you know a gutter. Um, so that's one thing that I didn't expect before, but mm -hmm. you know you deal, and 
Jana like relishes in that fact. Like, you can't leave the toilet seat up. I can't leave the toilet seat up. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, just like anything else, you just you, you live with it and it becomes normal, and then it's not that bad. One time, I was cleaning it out, and there's bags that you have to change, and it ripped open halfway through, and it everything oh. six weeks worth of you know dumped <laughs> every, uh, everywhere, and I had to clean it pretty much with a toothbrush. It was, oh goodness, it was awful. How about these floors? Floors engineered are wood floors, so they're feels luxurious, but they're not super expensive. But they're, they're nice. Butcher block countertops. Uh, a lot of people in the tiny house community go for this because it's cheap um, and pretty. Functional. Functional. The only thing is they take a lot of upkeep. So you have to frequently, every day, you have to clean them. Um, otherwise, you start getting weird kind of like mold spots in the cracks of your wood. Yeah. And you have to regularly uh, oil it with like a wood oil. Huh. Um, we probably do that once a month. You kind of see if you can see. We haven't oiled this kind of here in a while, and so it's it's looking a little bit worn and dry, kind of like a cutting board would get. Yes. So if, if you just take care of it and oil it, it all that will just go away instantly. Nice. Loft, loft sleeping. Yeah, there you go. Nice. Uh, loft sleeping is like it's difficult with a kid. That's one other thing that we didn't necessarily like plan for, because if you can imagine like me holding a pretty hefty toddler, like. <laughs> Once you get right here, yeah, it gets kind of difficult, and you still got a long way to go to the bed. So you kind of, you either have to do a coordinated tumble, like, uh. you're like, <laughs> you know, to get there yeah. um, is usually kind of how that goes. Yeah, but yeah, you walk around well like this, um, but our loft is probably the most amazing, Ooh. our favorite part of the whole tiny house. It's super cozy. Um, it really, it, it, you get to look out in the trees, like you sleep right by the window, and you feel almost like you're camping. It's like you're one with nature almost. Yes. You can easily just pop open a window, and it's it's our it's our safe space. It feels very peaceful um, with the white, everything that you know, the white ship lap, mm -hmm. um, which light color palettes are key because they make the space, along with natural lights, make the space feel very open. Mm -hmm. uh, we have 14 windows in this tiny house. 14. Uh, and Jana wanted more. We had to like budget. Um, Windows are expensive. Inside. Yeah. yeah. So, this is where we sleep. Nice, I like it. We co sleep. Um, a lot of people ask that what we do with the toddler. Yeah. Uh, we all sleep here and we like it. Like, it just works for us. You do what works for you and we kind of design this space around our needs. At some point, he'll go over there. Yeah, once he outgrows the bed, he'll hop um, over there. This mattress is nice. It's like carpet. I'm about to fall asleep. Thought, but like heat because your knees, like yeah, you, you do a lot of time, spend a lot of time on your knees. Oh, yeah. And it's not carpet, we have hardwood up here. So right. this is clutch. Nice. Especially with the little one under the arm. Yeah, exactly. This little deal right here is like our most used thing. Like we used to have another hook. I need to get another one that popped off, but like just it's so convenient to just hang your stuff. Hooks. We have so many like little hooks around. Yeah. <laughs> because there's so much wall space, like you just gotta utilize it. The double doors are key. You know, this opens up and we'll have, someday we'll have a massive deck. Yes. That's the idea. But natural light, like this lets in so much light during the day. And this space, this space really brightens up. Feels great. So closet space here is packed. But this is like our entire lives. Like literally all our clothes, all of Silas's toys, all of Silas's clothes fit into here. Which obviously you can imagine, like it limits them, the amount of things that you can have, but you have to be intentional about what you keep and what you don't. Nice work, man. Thank you. It's beautiful. How does it feel just living in it, given it was like your dream come to fruition? Um, it's really inspiring, even for ourselves, just to have being able to achieve a dream at such a young age. Um, it was always like a dream, but being able to just be brave enough to make it happen, yeah, uh, it, it feels great. And it, it, it kind of almost, almost propels us to make more decisions like that. Like, you can do anything with just a decision. Yes. That's it. Because you've seen it happen. Exactly. And so what was it that made you take it from an idea and actually move forward? It was really cascaded, so the most difficult part, or the thing that 
scares people off, I think, from pursuing is most of the time financial situation or the investment involved, whether that's like time and you're working and you, you don't have time to build it, you don't have the cash or, you know, you want a contract and you don't have the money to do so. And yeah. it's not feasible a lot of times, like if you're paying for, already paying for like rent or space to live. So that was the hardest thing for, for that. And that's why, you know, a couple years um, of planning, but we got the opportunity to move across the country for, for work and uh, out to San Francisco, and the rent out here is just insanely high. Yeah. So rather than do that, it's just if we take that money and put it into a tiny house, we'll pay it off in two years. So that's what we did. We, we took out a, a few different personal loans. So we're paying those back right now. But as it stands, we're on track to be totally debt free um, and owning our own, you know, owning a tiny house by the time we're 30. And it's an asset, and if you ever change your mind, you can sell it. Or Airbnb it. Or Airbnb it. If we outgrow it, we'll, we'll put it on a lake somewhere and have a really sick lake house. You know? <laughs> so it's, it's an asset for sure. Yes.